Hello everybody, welcome back to some more Brood War ladder battle action with light spawning down in the bottom right hand corner Dashik in the top left Now talking about Dashik a little bit because we haven't done many casts of him on the channel. He is 2022 ACS champion he managed to get into ASL one time I think uh, something like the 14th season hasn't been at the very tip top for a long time though now, he's not uh, quite at the level that we expect out of light but you know what sometimes light is a bit of a hit or miss he has so much respect in the Korean community but among uh, foreign community members seems like uh, he has some haters he's got some fans as well but uh, just from my perspective, I think he sometimes shows up massively. I think he affects the meta uh, in ways that maybe we don't fully understand. And that's where he gets a lot of his appreciation from the Korean audience. But in general, he seems to be kind of hit and miss, like I said. And we'll see if today is a hit or a miss. We've got two games between these two players, and I've been really enjoying this matchup recently. I've been playing not the 12 hatch style. I've been really focusing more on low econ plays and more of a, a zealot vein or a soma vein. And uh, it's been fun. It's a lot more fun than trying to just hold on to four bases as a zerg player and defend against everything that Terran can throw at you all at the same time it's fun to watch them try it though from a viewer's perspective it is a lot of fun to watch these Terran players just throw everything at the wall all the drops and battle cruisers and you know busts in the natural and the main it gets crazy but it is not a lot of fun to try and deal with uh, when you're playing in the moment. A couple of Ling's going to pop out in a m couple of seconds here. Because this one Marine has traversed the entire map. Hoping to just push away a drone or two. Second Marine going to arrive. He's actually camping just outside the natural. Just outside the vision of Dashik. He's going to spot it now. Good turnaround there. Really important that he doesn't take too much damage on this first Ling. And because he didn't lose that and didn't take too much damage on that, you can't really aggress as light. You're going to end up losing all of these Marines. So two more sets. That's a perfect amount. Six Lings will shut this down completely. Doesn't need to go for any more than that. Even if there was, you know, fourth Marine in it, you can see that there was a fourth Marine being rallied. Six Lings will wipe it out. So he has to go back home. There's the seventh Marine. Oh, no, sorry. Four Marines. Four Marines. I, I got mixed up between uh, Lings and Marines. Okay. Fifth Marine is there. Six Lings are on the way. My bad, guys. The Metabolic Boost is about to finish. We have plus one weapon on the way. So this is your standard... Well, standard in 2024 metagame with the very early plus one upgrade. This was played, or these, this series was played on the 21st of October, 2024. So, very recent series. Getting a look at Light playing his bread and butter in the current metagame. The four racks, early plus one. He may end up going into Valkyrie as well with this. It just depends on the amount of commitment from Dashik, I feel like Light is one of the best players microing Valkyries. Him and Speed are on a really high level. Of course, Royal and Rush can do the same things, but maybe not to the same level as what uh, Light and Speed are quite capable of doing. He's going to use his Medic to heal up some of these SCVs, which is a bit funny. I guess it helps when the Mutas come in to not have low HP SCVs, but that energy is very important. So kind of funny to see him use it like that. He's going to start his turrets. Of course, we have Mutas on the way. 
eight mutas in production with a third base down in bottom left minstrel is a pretty wild map pretty difficult to play a normal style of zerg on this map and there's flyer carapace that's not necessarily going to be for guardians but it could lead into a guardian play we'll just have to see fourth uh gate not gateway barracks on the way and the marine number is getting high there's this is the timing though this is the moment right as the mutilists arrive we have no range no range on these marines it's gonna have to stay tucked next to a lot of these missile turrets but if Dashik was brave flew fly in through this direction find this little pocket fight some of these marines it's very hard to fight mutas with no range so there's an opportunity is he gonna take it to try and dive in and after an scv instead gonna go right into the pocket back behind these mineral patches takes some damage on these mutas but can find some more probably kills on these scvs good pull on those scvs and only a few have gone down so far this is not the greatest for dashik he took quite a lot of damage he didn't lose any of the mutas which is great but these are so low you're gonna have to pull them out and you know leave leave the damaged mutas behind hopefully they don't get spotted and killed bringing together some fresh mutas as the marine medic ball starts to move out on the map we're about halfway done uh, carapace upgrade so without any queen's nest on the way i don't think this is going to be a guardian play marines stemming up in the middle another kill on this muta another medic gets sniped this is a great play though by light sending some marines around the bottom side he's hoping to catch his opponent unawares but he absolutely knows this is coming a great overlord positioned over this high ground will reveal everything he's got actually fantastic vision look at everything that dasha can see you can see this path you can see uh just over the bridge you can see stuff coming out this direction of course it's not perfect but at least he has a little bit of something some sort of vision over these different pathways allowing him to pick up on some of these uh, less microed move outs like if you just right click over here the marines are going to walk along this edge if you try to send something up here the marines or scvs are going to walk along that edge so if you're really careful and tried to walk all the way around yes you could avoid that overlord vision but he doesn't necessarily know that there is that there are overlords over there in the first place uh oh if he just stimmed and went there he could have actually killed these sunken colonies that would have been brutal but instead he gets an overlord the sunken colonies finish got lings and mutas all together 11 total hive is now on the way lurker aspect is coming up i think we're gonna see hydralis defiler this game making a few swipes kind of a mistake there from dashik you can see that in terms of marine medic versus mutalisk definitely light has an advantage he is much better at controlling these units in the early game than dashik is but dashik is quickly switching out of this point in the game he's gonna try to transition into the later stages he's got his evolution chamber he hasn't started his armor just yet that needs to be a priority and it should get started momentarily two sunkins down at the bottom left is that going to be enough to stop this small marine attack with the links and extra muta maybe maybe he can stop this yeah as the the links run up this should get wiped out pretty good hold from dashik just having those extra few units in the mix will save the day for him three marines is not going to break through these two sunken colonies plus the lurkers are going to finish up soon and so he will hold on for now just that small group of lings actually makes such a big difference he, he would have possibly lost this base or not lost the base but maybe lost a bunch of 
uh, drones at that base and then lost control over this marine medic group in the middle of the map. He's been constantly dogging this, but if he was forced to bring his mutas down to the bottom left to clear out just a small attack like that, he could have been busted in the natural. Now he can't be really busted. He's got the lurkers all stacked up and overlord over top of that one. And needs to reposition that a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Can't even see the lurker pothole. So very nicely positioned there. Bringing together more lurkers. I don't know if you can come down this ramp and hit the Nidus Canal from this position. This is a very difficult spot to try and defend. You can see one of these lurkers has been irradiated. He's going to try and get his overlords over those lurker potholes. He's got two. And Light is going to come running down here. No, he cannot defend this. This is going to be bad. Light gets right in on this. Two more lurkers come up. Another lurker going to pop through the Nidus Canal. He's actually doing a really good job. Dashik is at defending, but another angle I'm going to be breached. Lurkers do have that Dark Swarm now. Another Irradiate goes down, but this was a very reasonable defense from Dashik. That was a scary moment when the Marines are punching through on either side. Things get really frightening. Oh, a base or something up here. I'm not sure exactly what that was. It looks more like a supply depot was forced to be canceled, but I don't know why he would build a supply depot up there. Opportunity to jump on some of these vessels as they change locations, but light is on top of that. Gonna pull those out of harm's way. How many lurkers are underneath here? None. Zero lurkers in the natural is scary. With the Dark Swarm, the Lings probably won't be breakable. More lurkers are going to be made behind this. You want to save up as much uh, overall gas as you can as a Zerg player, but you don't want to be broken. Actually, in this case, because he's going for Hydralis to file... Uh, Oh, he's, he is building melee upgrades. So we're we gonna, we're we gonna make ultra. I guess so, eh? Ultra is gonna be coming up. All right, Mita's coming in, picking off some marines. Not bad at all. Looks like he was using hold position there, <laughs> making a bit of a mistake. Some scourge, not able to get their connections. But this is just this is this is light stuff. He's just gonna go back and forth, back and forth, keep on irradiating, over and over and over again. It's uh, kind of whittle down this third player. Ooh, he gets one of those. Finally managing to snipe a vessel. Do we have Dark Swarm? Oh, Dark Swarm. Dark Swarm in the natural. There we go. He finally gets a Dark Swarm down, but he lost some lurkers before that, and he's not going to get any of these vessels either. Both of the defilers uh, get killed off. This lurker is trying to get to the front line. He's not going to make it very far. Running past, he's going to go after the Nidus Canal. Just standing underneath this Dark Swarm is crazy. A lot of the Marines are going to go down. But killing off the Nidus, can he use that as an opportunity to break one of these positions? Chitinous plating is on the way. Really important upgrade because once that Chitinous plating is done, you can start to build these... Uh, Ultralis forces. Those Ultralis are actually going to be viable once Chitinous Plating is finished. He hasn't started his next uh, armor upgrade, which I'm a little bit worried about. That's uh, maybe forgotten about. Yeah, we're we're I mean, pretty far behind on that. Uh, as you can see, plus, plus two is about to finish. And yeah, he's just, he's completely forgotten about it. Oh my gosh. This is a tough, tough build, guys. It's so tough to try and hold on to all of these attacks to hold back a player the caliber of light uh, while getting all of these upgrades and building Nidus and he's just started a new Nidus that's so late as well he should have built that a long time ago bad plague doesn't really get too much with that plague a lot of fire bats at this front line he can't transfer stuff through at all oh these lurkers down here in a kind of a cheeky position picking off a few units um, both these lurkers go down. Oh my gosh. He could break this. Light could absolutely break this. Nice plague down here. Just hit the stim button with the fire bats. There's only lings 
in this natural. He could at least kill the Nidus, but he's holding back for now. Oh, this army is uh, acting kind of funny. There we go. Double expansion for light. As he continues to scale up his economy. Probably going to get a third uh, starport pretty soon as well, I imagine. Dark Swarm. Over by the third base. Killing off some SCVs. Not bad. Of course, these uh, lurkers are just going to get cooked by the irradiate but it is what it is you got to keep on sending those attacks out as best you can there's a nice plague doing a great job with that plague and even getting the lurkers under dark swarm this is fantastic he may be able to get this fourth gas up and operational right as his ultras are coming online still no plus two. Oh man dashik probably gonna lose this game <laughs> he's doing such a good job he's doing such a good job holding on to all of this Oh, and this is so sick as well. Look at this. Bringing the mutas up. He's going to be able to kill all these vessels. One more, one more. This one right there. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, well, there goes the mutas. Never mind. Wasn't as sick as I thought. But still a pretty good move. Killing off some of those vessels. He still doesn't know. Guys, he, he still doesn't know. We, we've got plus three on the way. He's going to be behind for the rest of the game. I almost I, I almost want to tap out when I see something like this. Like, as soon as you notice that, you're like, huh, I wonder if I started my plus three. Oh, shit. Plus two never even started. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you almost want to leave the game at that point. And you probably should. Bunch of radiants are going to go down. He needs to fight with Ultras now. He has to fight with Ultras. And I think he's about to realize still no plus two armor on the way. Dashik is going to take this fight and his forces are going to melt. They are going to absolutely melt even more than they are right now with the Irradiate. Um, Irradiate does the same amount of damage no matter how many uh, upgrades you have. The Gauze Rifles do far more if you don't have those carapace upgrades rolling he still doesn't know guys is 18 minutes in we should be on we should be started plus three already he hasn't noticed me personally when i play uh, ultra build i like to keep my uh evolution chamber on a hotkey and cycle through it just to make sure like keep looking at it make sure that i've uh that I've got it on a hotkey where I can continuously check and just make sure that it's on the way. And that I haven't missed it. But Dashik is going to try and push into this fourth base. He's got Dark Swarm. He's got Lings. Ultras breaking into this position. Looks like Light going to counterattack. And try to get up onto this high ground. Still no plus two. They're just sitting here. Building more bases. They're getting more gases online. Will take a bunch of irradiates, unfortunately. There's another one down. Quite a few of these vessels have been taken out. But the ultras are gonna have to engage. No more No more waiting. We gotta go with the ultras now. Ultra's gonna run up. Start to take this fight. A lot of them have been irradiated. Here comes the Lings from the backside. The Ultra's getting it on top of all this. There's the Dark Swarm. Okay, the Dark Swarm makes a big difference, obviously. This base may end up getting taken down. As everything has been cleaned up, though, the Ultras can change target over to this force. No medics in this army. Oh, they're on a right click. Okay, there we go. We'll get on top of all this. The Ultras holding their own. Pushing back these Marines. I. This is crazy, guys. Are we actually going to see Tachik win? Well, there it is. He found it. He found it. He finally found it. And he's just realized. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we have plus one Carapace. This is horrible. Plus three is about to finish. The Ultras will melt. Another base in the top right. Lings are going to get up there and stop that, though. Snuff that out. Meanwhile, Dashik is on five gases. In another game where 
Uh, Carapace was done. I would say that he wins this 100%. He should be able to take this game no problem. But plus three just finished. And these Marines are going to shred. They are going to shred. Coming in from different angles. Dashik trying to take a fight. Look at the Ultra just, just going to die. Oh, GG, he wins. No way. Light just taps out. He's way behind in supply. He wasn't doing very well in this game for sure. I wonder if he even realized that he was still on plus one. If he just gets a big ball of Marines out on the map and keeps the Defilers back, I don't think that Dasha can really attack him. Like, it would be very hard to actually get an attack off. Kind of funny that he taps out as he's running away as well. Like these Lings are going to come in. They're going to die for sure. Lings are just going to get melted. And this Ultra is going to go down. There's not a lot of Ultras on the field. Yeah, I guess the five gas. With five gases out, I, I, I think that he would just lose. I just, I cannot emphasize enough how important this plus one armor, just having plus one. Very surprised to see this result with light just tapping out before he even loses his minute. He's still mining on these two bases and he just leaves. I don't know about his mental guys. Light, is he falling apart? Let's find out. Game number two. All right, what's going on? Wow. Game number two. And guys, right after game number one, something kind of wacky happened. Uh, I was sitting in my chair pr prepping for, for this game here, and uh, I suddenly started having this terrible chest pain. I don't know what was going on. Uh, yeah, it was it kind of freaked me out. I just started really having this stabbing pain in, in my chest, and I wasn't sure what to do about it. I ended up uh, going to the hospital and getting checked out. Everything's fine, but... Um, it was kind of a wacky day yesterday, right in the middle of this series. So uh, we're back. <laughs> Everything's fine. My heart is good. I got CT scan. I got uh, blood tests and everything. Uh, I'm 33. I work out a lot. Like I should be fine, but I hadn't worked out in like three days and I hadn't done chest for maybe a week. And so uh, I was really surprised to have this really terrible chest pain all of a sudden still don't know what it was i'm probably i'm just gonna let it go i don't know um just keep an eye on it i guess uh but i was uh hella confused and during the time uh that i was in the hospital and then you know i took the rest of the day off uh, some more games came out from dashik we've got dashik versus speed we've got dashik versus sharp uh, we got Dashik versus um, Scan as well, so I'm just going to make this into a Dashik video. We're just going to watch this guy. I'm pretty impressed that he was able to take down Light in game number one. Uh, despite missing his Carapace upgrades. Pretty impressive stuff, so we're going to take a, a bit of a look at this guy uh, against some other opponents. And yeah, so it's just going to be a longer video. I'll put that out tonight. And hopefully something like that will never happen again. <laughs> Just fingers crossed. Looks like a 12 hatch coming out of Dashik. It's going to be a pretty normal game so far. Nothing out of the ordinary. As we're, uh, oh wait, what's this? What's this doing here? Okay, that's where he's going to put his second barracks. So. It's going to be a stim rush. I'm try to come across the map and force some sunken colonies. It's not that far of a rush distance on Pantheon, so I, I, I can see it. I can see it. Maybe he can get something done here. Put some pressure on Dadashik. I'm sure he's uh, feeling a bit annoyed that he lost that last game. He really did tap out a bit too early, I feel. But that is uh, a lot of times the case on the ladder. He probably re probably watched that replay and went, what the hell? Why did I leave this game? Or maybe not. 
Depends on uh, his mental state. Light may have just thought, eh, well. Doesn't matter, next game. Second gas coming out. This is quite a lot of lings. Yeah, that's a lot of lings. I think the Dashik has figured out what's going on here. He's seen the, the endless uh, production on the barracks. Sending a drone to top right. Okay, not that many, just six. I, I was expecting a little bit more. Stim is on the way. Those medics, first two medics are about to come out. Got to pull back. Ah, losing one ling already. That's, that's rough. We're going to have to start sunken colonies in the front pretty soon. I don't think there's any chance that he'll, any shot that he'll be able to uh, dive on the Marines and actually do anything. He could run by. I'm surprised he didn't run north with these lings. Yeah, there we go. Two sunken colonies. Well done. Going to get those up and operational in the natural while just pulling back these lings slowly but surely. If uh, Light decides to dive directly onto the sunken colonies, then the lings can be helpful. Looks like he might be able to catch some reinforcements. Maybe go after that medic at the back. And hit the stim button and run right up. Lings are going to come in to fight. Oh, he's targeting down the one sunken colony on the, on the top side. Drones come out and help out just a little bit. And he will be able to clear this. Nicely done. A very nice hold from Dashik. That was really incredible. He was able to hold on like that. Now, this run by could deal some damage. We've got the fire bat. See if he can get on top of this. He will get the lings at least, but the mutas pop out just in the nick of time. Yeah, you don't want to let that fire bat even get a couple of hits onto the drones. Suddenly you could lose three or four and it gets, uh, gets out of control very quickly when you start to lose drones at this stage. And so as the dust settles, I really do feel like Dashik is in a good spot right now. Two Marines heading up towards the top right. That's been unscouted, so he may end up killing off maybe one or two drones over in that position, which is fantastic. There's no... Oh, God, flying through with the Muta. He loses one immediately. Uh, getting in here while the uh, range is still not quite done. Getting on top of the Marines is fantastic. These Marines going to get in and kill two drones, though. That sucks. That really is painful because he doesn't have any... Doesn't have any lings on the map. So without any lings on the map, you're not going to be able to deal with this easily. You'll have to wait until some lings pop out. There we go. Gets the lings out. We'll be able to clear out those marines. Trying to kill off the barracks actually might be successful. As soon as the marines come up, yeah, just clear them out. Easy peasy. They're going to go down immediately. And there's like no marines on, this, on the field. Two do finally pop out, but I think he can kill this barracks. Yeah, this barracks is going to end up going down. He does lose one Muta for it. Forces out so many turrets, though. And he's gone for Flyer Carapace behind this. And seven drones are about to come out. Now, killing off the barracks is nice. But it's not as good as killing a whole bunch of SCVs. I think he might have done better to, uh, you know, kill all those Marines. And then just fly through and camp down here in the bottom left corner. Force the, the SCVs off the line and, you know, you can clear out these two turrets. That's pretty easy. Open up this position, maybe break through, but he might come back around and try that here in a moment. We'll see. The Marine number is starting to grow, but it's not growing as fast as it should because we've only got the two barracks. Third barracks is coming up, delaying the starport a little bit longer. Marines are going to move out on the field. He immediately catches on to that and should be able to just wipe this out. This is not many Marines. And so with just some good control and eventually just diving on top. There they all go. Light going to lose another Bioforce. Dashik in full control of this game, honestly. Lurker aspect is coming. We've got the Hive as well. He must be going for a Valkyrie. Yeah, there's the Armory. And so the Armor will be... Uh, really, really good in this situation. He should break these turrets. There's so few Marines out. And with this number of uh, mutas, he could easily break the turrets in the mineral line. However, he's just kind of not, not interested in doing that. Going to pick off those two Marines once again. Limiting that count. A tank pops out. 
Light is going to try for a tank push over across the map with the one Valkyrie, maybe two. Wait for two Valkyries, but it's going to be too late. There's going to be Hive finish. We're going to have uh, Defilers out on the map. He is in a bit of a bad spot. Just trying to add on his fourth barracks now and keeping these Mutalis at bay. I guess while we're doing the transition, maybe better not to build uh, or not to dive in with the mutas, just keep the mutas alive in case we need to deal with this push across the map. So he's going to bring a bunch of Scourge together. Let's see if he can snipe this Valkyrie. If he snipes the Valkyrie, it's going to delay the push from light by a lot. He's not going to want to push out with just Marines and a few tanks. So here we go. Going to go for the dive. Oh, he gets it. Wow. So well done. Dashik. Dude, this guy is impressing me a lot. This is some great play. Absolutely predicting what Light was going to do. And now the tanks are moving out with just a small group of Marines. If he can dive on this and kill the tanks, it's going to be such an easy victory from there. As long as he just keeps the uh, Carapace upgrades going and deals with any drops, he should be able to win this. We're going to have some defilers on the map here soon. Oh, he's not researching. Wait, <laughs> is he just going to forget to research consume? Oh, there's been so many good things from Dashik this uh, game. Okay, there we go. Consume is on the way. There's been so many good things this game, but he could just fail to uh, something like that. Here we go. It's a stim button. Oh my God. Beautifully done. I'm going to pick off so many Marines in this clump. Excellently executed by Dashik. Killing off a ton of these Marines. There's still four tanks though, and that is scary. Wants to come in and try to dive. Let me pick off another one of these Valkyries, but gonna have to be careful. He built some extra Sunkins out in the front. That's per that's uh, awesome from Dashik. Just slow down this push as much as possible. Four tanks beasts through these sunken colonies very very quickly however only a few more seconds needs to be purchased so that we can get the uh, consume upgrade finished and as soon as that's done this push is over and light is going to be in once again a very rough position here we go there it is dark swarm in the front he does lose one lurker as it's trying to burrow and he's starting to lose quite a few overlords as well. This could get out of control. More Scourge coming out, trying to get rid of the Valkyries here at the front. Lurker going to push its way forward. Not getting too greedy, trying to push it right up on top of the tanks. Instead, he's just going to get under that Dark Swarm and try to hold back these tanks. He's going to go, I think, to the north. Try to set up so that he can hit the, the drone line, the mineral line. It's very important that Dashik pushes this now. Yeah, he's just going to target target the drones. It's like he's kind of failing to do so. Maybe that's out of range, actually. That might be a little bit too far. Nope, there it is. He sees it now. Able to hit those drones. So, this is a pretty annoying circumstance for Dashik. He would really like to get his drones mining on these mineral patches. He could, of course, transfer through and just mine over here. But that's already pretty... Uh, strongly saturated. Here comes the Dark Swarm push. Gonna finally push back these tanks. And so this is over. He can get back to mining. And he can start to focus on taking his next base. However, Light is doing a mech transition. Oh man. This could be crazy. He's gonna start transitioning to mech while going for drops. Generally, when you go for mech, you just kind of play a control game. Just kind of chill get uh you know bio forces in front of each base I'm gonna siege up over here once again try to get some hits onto the mineral line does get into position though dashik uh gonna stop these for now nice plague on those tanks of course the tanks can still hit over the wall probably will kill a few drones but all he needs to do is get a few units over into that position to deal with uh this incursion Drop is going to get met with plenty of uh, mutas and lings in this main base. So that gets cleaned up remarkably well. 
Of course, again, once again, not mining at this location. He should be sending a drone over to take this fourth base here shortly. Did not forget the plus two this time. So that's very, very good. He's got plus two on the way. These Valkyries going to be pushed back for the time being. And a third base is going to be taken. I was tr going to try to say that usually when you do this type of transition, you're going to want to set up a bioforce in front of the natural, set up a bioforce in front of the third base, and then double expand. But Light is being a little bit greedy here. He's trying to do even more than that. He's trying to do a bunch of drops, do the transition, and double expand all at the same time. It is quite greedy, and Dashik is really not being greedy at all. He's very slow at taking this fourth base. But he has a good number of drones, and he's building into a lot of units. He's getting prepared for more aggression coming out of light. And that actually might not work out too well for him. Because light is actually just being very conservative. He's focused much more on getting bases rather than putting on this pressure. Setting up mines everywhere. And, you know, most of these units are not very good at clearing mines. Like Lings and stuff are just going to be running through the map, getting picked off by a lot of the mines and vultures that are available. These Lings are going to make it up into the top left. The base in top right was denied for the moment, but... Dashik should be able to get that online in just a couple of seconds. He did get his uh, army plagued flash, or not flash, Light got his army plagued. Uh, I'm not sure where the dropships are. There's one, maybe another one somewhere else out on the map. This base in the top left gets picked off. So he's been denied the double expansion. Another expand going to come down. And he will be taking the center left. Looks like Dashik is already on top of that, though. Sending a small group of lings. Maybe able to kill some SCVs. A few ultras are starting to pop out. We've got plus two armor. Plus three armor has not been started yet, though. Does need to remember that upgrade. Very important upgrade, that plus three armor. Uh, maybe not as important when you're going for ag up against mech, but still could be very useful. Some Goliaths are popping out now. We can see the floating barracks moving into the middle of the map. It's not a play we've seen very regularly anymore. Uh, and it's kind of fun to watch uh, a Terran player attempt this once again. Because it was pretty common at the beginning of Remastered. But it's kind of fallen off. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh. Ouch. Triple Lurker kill for just two mines. That is some sick value. That's... Nine supply, 300 gas, uh, 375 gas, in fact. So, pretty nasty. Getting a mine like that. Looks like these Valkyries will finally go down. Just trying to deal some damage in the main base. Kill off a few overlords. Not going to be as useful anymore. And as soon as those die, there might be an opportunity for a tech switch back into Mutas. He hasn't been continuing the Muta upgrades, which some... Some Zerg players will do once they spot that it's mech. He hasn't been doing that here, but he is going to drop. And drop can be really effective against mech as well. Especially when they don't have any Valkyries left. They don't have any Valkyries, no anti-air. Aside from a few turrets and a couple of Goliaths moving around. This could be fantastic for Dashik. He's holding back for now. He's double expanding. His third base is, or his fourth base is quite late, though. Have to say that for him. We've already got base number four, base number five, and base number six coming up for life. So he is expanding like an absolute madman. Going completely nuts. Gamete mitosis on the way. We're going to get that queen upgrade energy for those queens uh, coming soon. But meanwhile, Light is already pushing. Light is on the warpath. He's gone up to quite a few factories. He's just busting out these tanks, vultures, and goliaths. And he's going to force engagements that I don't think uh, the Zerg is actually ready for. He's going to come up here, try to get a Dark Storm on this high ground. 
Maybe put one down on these tanks as well. Try to drag a mine, potentially. Okay, not going to do too well with that. And a lurker here. Pretty good at holding off against these little marine pushes, but this one manages to run by. He's actually going to lift and drop some... Uh, looks like maybe drop a, a ultra over in this position. That's kind of funny. Some good plagues on a lot of these vultures. Going after the drones over at 12 o'clock. He really does need to move some forces around to deal with some of this attacking. He's more worried about the natural, but he's going to lose 12 o'clock. The drop into the top left is going to be strong. We have a uh, defiler in the mix as well. So he's going to force the lift. Can come down and start to deal with this base as well. Run by over into the top right. Oh my gosh, these very low HP vultures are actually going to do a whole bunch of work. It's like this has been cleaned out. This is still dealing a lot of damage. The one lurker under Dark Storm, super annoying. There are finally some vessels coming out. They've actually got almost full energy on them. Uh, and so we'll be able to deal with the lurkers. But this one ultra doing so much damage. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. It's not even really registering how much how many kills it's getting because the uh irradiate is actually dealing most of the damage. Gonna come out and deal with these tanks. A small contingent of tanks getting picked off. I think Dashik is keeping this scrappy enough to where maybe he can actually win this in a long, long game. Wow, these tanks can't hit. That is kind of hilarious. Okay, they do finally kill off that uh, one single uh, ultra list that was in that position. He's gonna pick up another ultra, I think, dump inside. This tank goes down. The pressure is really on light right now. Dasha, can he take advantage? Try to get more bases up and online. He needs to take like the entire right-hand side of the map as soon as possible and keep dropping into this top left. Oh my goodness. That is so many drones at this base. Oh man. That is a lot of kills. Holy seven on this one. We've got what? Seven on this one and five there. Eight, seven, five. My goodness. Even more kills are going to go down here. Let's see to get one more. There we go. Does pick that off. <laughs> he picks up the drone. It's going to die, I think. Wait, what? Doesn't die? Wait, is that for real? Does that live? You pick up the drone that's uh, that's been irradiated and it lives? I had no idea. This is the first time hearing about it. Uh, that, that doesn't work for defilers, I don't think. That would be insanely good if that worked for defilers or lurkers. That would be... Uh, just crazy, crazy OP. It's like another run by. Oh, uh, this is going to be so annoying. Oh my god. Dashik is going to let five vultures run up into that base. Once again, he's actually dealing some damage over here, but his center right base is going to end up going down. Drops actually could save this, maybe. Okay, dropping right on top of this. Looks like he will clear this out. We've got a defiler, but GG is called. Oh man, Dashik was doing a great job, but these run-bys absolutely slaughtering his drone lines twice over, plus the eraser trick was nasty. This is a very fun game, though. Crazy, crazy back and forth. He was only 20 supply be behind when he tapped out, by the way. Pretty wild. I think these drone or these uh, SCVs were actually being sent to just mine from the 6 o'clock. He was almost getting on top of this. If he drops a Dark Swarm and drags some mines properly, maybe he could have cleared these Siege Tanks. Still, there's a lot of stuff on the map. Wait, is this all that he has? Man, Light really didn't have that much. He was kind of limping in this game, too. That's crazy. Both players kind of tapping out a little bit early, I feel. Seemed like he was going to get, you know, another wave of drones out. He should have been able to... Uh, stop this base from completely going down. We bring an ultra up there. Pull the drones to the natural and just... Man, if only he had built like an evo chamber there to make it a little bit harder for vultures to run by. He probably wouldn't have lost this game. Ugh, this is this is a crazy close one. I'm really loving Dashik's play though. From the early game, like the way that he was using his mutas and how he was picking off uh, Valkyries, his response to uh, the push from light 
it's not easy to get on in on top of light and force him into a bad position like what he had in the early game. Uh, but Dashik somehow managed to make it work. Uh, he's not the fastest player in the world, of course. He's not maybe the, the best Zerg that we have. But this guy is uh, a serious contender. And I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. So let's see uh, how he fares against a player like Sharp. Maybe against Speed. Let's jump into that game next. Okay, I reached into my deck of cards and pulled out the wild card, Speed. Down here in the bottom left. We've got Dashik in the center right. What will Speed pull out on Dominator? And will Dashik be able to keep up with this guy? Speed, he doesn't have the experience that Light has, but he's got the... The speed, no... Uh, no pun intended. He is insanely fast as you can see almost 600 APM at the beginning of this game he's not going to be able to keep that up but he will keep up a pace that is hard to contend with and that's kind of the way that he pulls Zerg players apart that's that's how he beats some of the best Zerg players in the world it's just he sets a rhythm and a pace that's hard to keep up with He's not like a rush who's going to hit you with a timing attack that's uh, going to just be uh, just the perfect timing attack for the exact moment that he needs to break you. That's that's kind of how Barracks plays as well. That's how a lot of Terran players uh, do it. They just get that, that nice little niche timing uh, attack that breaks you open right before you're ready as the Zerg player. No, 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 no. Speed, he will just basically outrun you. He's going to put a bunch of stuff into dropships and start hitting every single base at the same time and parade push all the way across the map right into your natural. He's going to be hitting in, the, you know, three, four different locations and eventually breaking you open just because you weren't paying attention to one of those four locations at the same time. One little micro mistake during all the chaos will end you as a Zerg player. So that's what Speed is counting on in most of these games. He's going to send out his first Marine. That will be spotted by the first drone, which will probably prompt Dasik not to send his drone to the natural. I may anyways. The Marine is typically sent across the map just to push away the original uh you know, one to two drones that come out here to mine. I'm gonna make one set of lings just to deal with that. Wow, a lot of damage has been put down on this SCV. It's actually almost killed it with just some stray shots out of these drones. And although he did deal a little damage to one of these drones with the SCV, that's hardly worth it. You really do want to keep this SCV alive as long as possible. To make sure that you have some information about what's coming out of these eggs and now that the lings are out he's going to be spreading and chasing this you're not going to live for very long with just five hp that is one hit kill and there it is it's dead a little bit rough for speed the way he started this off it's not looking great he's going to move out this is crazy okay so speed is going to do the opposite of what makes sense because usually what you do is you keep a SCV around the the eggs and just see what's popping out and if you only see drones then you move out because you know that you're the, the marines are not just going to get killed but speed just walks out after his drone after his uh SCV dies thinking that oh yeah probably you're not going to build extra lings <laughs> and look at this there's lings right there you might be able to get a drone or two but oh my gosh Dasik run 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 okay ling speed's done Go, 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 go. What are the Lings doing? Oh my gosh, the Lings went in a weird direction there. He gets three drone kills. Okay. God damn it, Speed. How did that end up working out, man? This is so counterintuitive. It's so silly what he's just decided to do. Oh, and he's going into mech after this, by the way. What in the heck? He just wanders out in the map, just through the middle. It had those two Lings. There was two Lings that went around the, the, those Marines in the middle. 
If he had spotted that, it's instant death. No damage at all on the side of Dashik. But he goes across, gets insanely lucky, and just gets some damage. Just absolute pure luck there from speed. But uh, playing in a counterintuitive way, sometimes it ends up working out. Uh, in your advantage. Now, he's going to probably go for a, a speed play. Just try to run by with Vultures uh, here in a moment. Let's see if he starts speed, Vulture speed, or if he starts uh, Charon boosters. Okay, Charon boosters on the way. Never mind. Charon boosters are going to come up. Turrets are on the way. Goliaths are here. Oh, he catches one of the Vultures. That's huge. One vulture goes down. Second vulture is going to end up dying to the Muta, most likely. He just needs to get the moving shot. Now, there we go. He gets it. And there's really nothing he can do. Try to make a turn around. Try to, try to buy some time there, but not going to really buy much time. And now he can only produce Goliaths, and there's no threat of a vulture on the map. So, very easy for Dajik to just go out and build another base. No problem whatsoever. I'm surprised to see him go for uh, attack. Air attack rather than air defense. Because generally armor is better against mech. But we'll see what he decides to do. Dashik could just try to dive and just kill with pure muta. It's uh, a little bit risky. Because every time you dive, you're going to be losing a lot of HP. Due to the uh, missiles. The Karen boosted missiles from these... Uh, Goliaths, but he's found a little pocket in the back. If he kills off a Goliath or two, it gets kind of crazy. He will get one. Not bad, not bad. Another Goliath comes down. Gonna get the two. Oh, he's only got... He's got enough Mutas to three shot, but not enough to two shot. So he is gonna lose a Muta on the way out. Pretty rough, pretty rough. We've got speed for the Vultures on the way. Not the greatest start to this engagement, honestly, for Dashik. But he's going to try again over at the natural. Let's see how many SCVs he can kill. He's just going to clear out this turret first. The lights are going to be sent up the ramp. But then he can rotate back down into the main base mineral line again, potentially. Not the greatest control from Dashik. Once again, missing some shots, which could have one-shot an SCV. Instead, just dealing quite a bit of damage to a lot of these SCVs. As you can see, many of them in the low uh, red zone of their HP bar. And he's going to rotate back around once again. Definitely should be able to kill this SCV at least. And come through, get a few more shots off. He's going to trap himself at the back, but at least he spots the starport. That is a huge scout. So the, the two things that you are worried about as the Zerg player... Uh, the two different real branches to this build, the Goliath build, is five factory Goliath, and there's also upgrade mech. So you really need to find out what which one of those is coming. Oh god, drones are running across the map while uh, vultures are heading out. There's actually nothing in the natural. Luckily for him, there's uh, vultures are heading over towards the top right. Uh, let me talk a little bit more about the two prongs of mech, the two different directions that mech can take. Uh, you can just go five factory, and that's going to be a huge timing with plus one, plus one. Uh, potentially, you could go with just, just plus one attack or plus one armor, but usually you wait for both. Um, another run by. Heading over here towards the natural. It gets uh, taken down pretty quickly. Only one drone fell. Uh, but without any sunken colonies, I'm a little worried for Dashik that he's not going to be able to defend everywhere. Mines are getting laid out now. And these mutas in a good position to block this. So I don't think he'll get any damage at the third either. Another run by over towards the natural. Uh, it's fine to just defend this with mutas for now. But eventually you want to uh, free up the mutas to do other things. So... Eventually, we're... Oh, okay. Coming in to kill some more drones. There we go. Three more drones go down over at this third base. It's almost time to build something. Almost time to build some... Uh, sunken colonies, maybe, huh? Dashik, two more drones go down? How, how long are we going to wait until we start building these sunken colonies? 
We're gonna let speed just go crazy, keep sending in vultures on us over and over and over again. Well, that's what his plan is. That's what he's gonna continue to do. He's got a plus two on the way, and he's just gonna keep rallying vultures, I think. Just keep sending them in over and over and over again, trying to kill as many drones as possible and just slow you down. As long as he slows down the Zerg player, he's gonna be happy. Just keep him, keep him at a, a slow pace. And he gets another drone. And eventually he's gonna move out with a massive, massive army with great upgrades and he's gonna have a Radiate as well. So it's gonna be very tough for Dashik to fight if he doesn't have the economy uh, prepared in advance. He needs to get this economy up and running but he's having a hard time because of all the damage that's been done, all of the drones that have been killed. He is starting to get that drone saturation online. He's starting to get those extra hatcheries laid down as well. Another run by over towards this main base. Only one vulture is going to slip by. Could probably get one drone, maybe two. Yeah, gets two drones, but won't get much more. Again, this is just little scratches, little uh, annoyances by speed. He's going to force more and more damage onto the Zerg player and slow him down bit by bit. More Hydras are popping out now, though. And with the Hydra number getting higher, I doubt there will be options for Vultures to deal much damage for very much longer. So we're going to slip in here one more time. Another drone goes down and another two more drones again. Just slight, slighting the economy. 37 drones total. And I, I wish I had a count of how many drones were killed this game at this point. It's been a lot. And so the economy is just not quite there. He doesn't have the ability to build a massive army uh, to try and stop this third base from coming up. And so speed will just get this kind of for free. Just going to just going to head up there, set up some tanks and just just start start making stuff up there on the high ground. Turrets and tanks and everything are going to be set up and. I don't think there's really anything that Dasha can do about it. He's got drop on the way. Uh, I didn't see Gamete Mitosis. I don't see a Queen's Nest. So he hasn't added that. Oh, there it is. Queen's Nest. Right as I say it. That's the kind of final tech for Zerg in this position. You really do need to get that. He's also getting armor for Muta. So he'll have the option to, you know, switch things up and try to... Uh, you know, go back and forth between Hydra production and Muta production and maybe catch his opponent off guard. But for now, a big drop into the main is going to probably kill a whole bunch of supply depots. Look at where the army is for speed. He's going to kill a bunch of supply depots. He may even go after this armory. If he gets in and kills the armory, it's going to be super painful. Meanwhile, he's killing a bunch of drones diving in on this fourth base. Drop in the main. Going to get to work here. There's one irradiate. It's just going to kill the Hydra that was uh, irradiated. Pull out that one Muta. Pull it out. Pull it out. Oh my gosh. It's dealing so much damage. Okay. Go after the armory. Go, 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 go. We need to get the armory. Armory, 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 armory. Why are we focusing down supply depots? Get the armory. Okay. Uh, speed. Go, go, go. He's actually getting into position now. Very nicely done by speed. Getting in here. Just in time to save that armory is going to be fantastic for him. Plus two attack is done. Plus one armor is finished as well. No overlord with this attack. So he's actually going to lose a lot to some of these uh, mines. Mitas will soak a lot of that damage as the Hydras push forward. This attack is pretty scary, but the tanks are setting up. They're going to deal a lot of damage. Nice mine drag there. That was like a... A Dragoon running forward and killing off a bunch of these tanks. That's perfect by Dashik. I love it. That was amazing. He kills so many more tanks than he should have been able to. Uh, if he was just targeting or something like that. By just dragging that mine in. And now he's setting up for another drop. He's setting more Hydras down. Gonna get another drop going in the main. He really does need to kill this armory. If he kills the armory, it makes a world of difference. An absolute world of difference. Let's see. If he can make it happen. More Hydras being loaded up. Army's going to be sent back to deal with this. Meanwhile, can send another Hydra force around. Maybe get up on, on this ramp. Start killing off some some of these uh, si uh, 
supply depots. Get those supply depots going because there's no tank on that high ground. It'll force even more uh, attention out of speed. So, oh gosh, just kind of running into mines here. Okay, another one goes down to mines. There's some tanks coming up on the high ground, but that's going to split speed even further. He's going to have even more things to deal with. So he will get these tanks up in time. Another supply depot gets started, and so the hydras won't be able to run through. Pretty good defense by speed. Only losing a single supply depot. More hydras in this overlord are going to be dropped maybe on top of this. I don't know. Drops a hydra. Does lose both overlords, though. Only one tank up on this high ground. We'll be able to push everything back. Now, let's look at the economy of Dashik after this has all been done. 46 drones. Not too bad. He's going to try and take fifth base. Um, looks like a mine ended up picking that off. Oh, he needs to get this base. Ah, oh, not enough money. I'm going to lose that drone, unfortunately. Hydras over here will stop the run by at least. This hide just finally ended up going down. Bottom right corner of Speed's base. He was never able to stop the uh, armory from finishing, which is pretty unfortunate. This uh, third attack upgrade is going to make the Hydras melt so much quicker. Uh, he does have Brood Ling on the way. And a bunch of queens pop out. I don't think that speed is quite ready to push yet. So this is a good time to be making these queens. He's still threatening with drops, although these are completely empty. But it's a good threat to have just on the map. Now, one way that I personally love to see Zerg players deal with these attacks. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. That's so many drones that just went down. That is incredibly painful. He's going to lose even more. Oh, man. That really does suck. Super hard to deal with vultures just running around everywhere, especially on a map like this with bases like that. He really does want to take uh, 12 o'clock. But one way that I really like to see Zerg players deal with this uh, type of Terran play, and it, you can see that Speed is already preparing for it, I like to see Zerg players do a big drop in the main with a ton of Hydras. And then when the tanks get pulled back into the main to deal with it, you come in with the, the queens and kill all the tanks. It's, it's so much better to me. It makes so much more sense than, for example, trying to uh, fly in, flying in with the queens and trying to hit the tanks and then uh, trying to attack with hydras in a big arc. That's how a lot of Zerg players will do it. Um... I just, I think it's much better if you can force the Terran player to reposition. If you can force the Terran player to reposition with a drop, it's even better because you're going to be killing their infrastructure at the same time. You get a big drop in, a ton of Hydras. Then as the the tanks are coming back, boom, 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 you land a bunch of those um, Broodlings. And the Goliaths are just not going to be able to dive on top of the Queens and actually kill them uh, and prevent that from happening. So let's see if Dashik tries for something like that. There's not a, really a good place to drop at the moment. Like he could go in, like he could bring his all of his uh, overlords to here and then fly past and drop back here. But then where do his Queens go? I guess he could fly the Queens past as well and then just wait for the tanks to come down this ramp. And then he can start to do it. But look, speed is pushing. He's lost the initiative. Uh, Dashik is on the defensive now. And he's got some queens out. But is it going to be enough? Where are all the queens? Okay, he's splitting the queens. He's coming in with the hydras at kind of a wide angle. I don't know how this is going to go, though. Queen's going to cast all of their broodlings. There we go. Picking off quite a few tanks. Does get another two. One more going down. There's only three tanks left in this army, which is pretty good. But he lost most of his queens. He's going to have to remake a full army of queens. We've got one more broodling ready, but I'm not sure he's going to recognize that. More tanks are coming up, I think. No, no more tanks. Okay, two more tanks are going to be pulled over from the third base and to come join this army. But that is not many tanks to try and fight what's mostly Hydralisk. Now, the Hydralisk upgrades are not great. We don't have any armor upgrades on this, and this might have just been the end of the game. All of those hydras going down, you have to fight uh, as one 
as the Zerg player. You have to bring all of your Hydras together uh, in order to overwhelm the Terran player. And there it is. GG is called Speed. Takes this game home. Well played by him. I mean, this this uh, mech play looked very, very scary. And he did exactly what I was talking about him doing at the beginning of this game, which is just pull the opponent apart by just being everywhere at once. Speed vultures running into each and every base constantly picking off drones just slowing down his opponent so that he could get into this upgrade mech i don't think that dashik's response to the upgrade mech was perfect but i think it was a pretty good idea the big drop into the main was was great if he had dropped on top of this uh group of supply depots when it was you know not totally covered by mines and turrets there's only a few turrets in here just fly in uh, send the mutas first to tank the turret hits and then just drop on top of this area gun down the armory stop the plus two you could see a completely different game if the plus two gets stopped completely different where hydras can actually fight everything and it doesn't look like this where you know the <laughs> the mech army just stands there and blows up everything uh the hydras can actually stand and fight a little bit better um but that wasn't the case speed takes out dashik excellent game here once again though i think dashik put up a really good fight and i'm very excited to see how he plays against flash or not flash excuse me sharp which is coming up next guys sharp versus dashik that's what we're jumping into game number four all right into our next game with sharp spawning here in the bottom left and of course the man of the hour our Zerg player down here in the bottom right. He's been uh, providing us some, us some with some pretty damn good games. Dashik. I liked the speed mech play in that last game. He, he, he strikes me more of a drop guy. More of a you know marine medic into drop. But his vulture control in... TVP is to be respected, that's for sure. And we saw it just there. Also very, very strong versus Zerg. And look at this. We have an eight racks coming out of Sharp. He's going to get things started real quick. Though he may end up getting scouted pretty early on. You can see the... Overlord's going to reach this natural here in just a moment. As soon as he sees the positioning, uh, he's going to know for sure what is coming. Of course, the hatchery is going to start before he sees that. As long as he doesn't build any more drones, he should be okay. He's going to send out a drone to go scout. SCV's heading in both directions. Looks like he's just going to grab that cool we'll see what he does to counteract this play let's uh take a look at his vision now see he's just spotting the supply depot he sees the barracks is finished and, and now he is completely aware of what is going on he'll pull the drone immediately send this one back home the scouting drone on its way back first marine heading across the map menacingly How many drones are we going to pull here? Dashik. So far, only five. A bit of an undercommitment, but maybe he can make it work. Usually you pull eight. He starts the gas, which is a little bit surprising. Gonna try to run by. All right, this kind of makes sense. We're gonna run by. Uh, Sharp doing a good job of making sure that those can't intercept the incoming Marines. This one going to get caught on that high ground. Pretty good job by Dashik. Going to catch that. Not able to stop this first bunker, but it's a quite far away from the hatchery. And I believe that if he builds... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, he loses the drone. That was a bit of a mistake. Definitely should have pulled that drone back into the main. Um, Yeah, he can't build a bunker close enough to the hatchery where it's still in range of this bunker. And then it's going to be in range of the hatchery. So Dashik is fine here. All he needs to do is just keep making lings. And in a little bit, he will be able to dive onto this. 
uh, kill the bunker and bring all the rest of the drones home. He's maybe even going to kill that one Marine. No, he's just going to go after the bunker. Very nice blocking, keeping the Marine, the uh, SUVs from repairing this. Whoa, ho, ho, that was getting close. If one or two more links died, that bunker was going to live. But as it stands, all of the Marines going to get taken out and this one SUV going to be sent across. Nice job with the two links at the natural. Too bad he didn't pick that off because Sharp is going to get the vision of the timing of this layer. He doesn't know exactly when it was, but he knows that it's on the way. And so he should be preparing with an early eBay. Knowing that that's going to be on the way is... Uh, very important. There goes the SCV. Falling. He's not going to know the exact timing of the Spire, unfortunately. And so he may end up building a bunch of turrets a little bit too early. But a few Lings out in the front. Going to come forward to try to get this. Ah, we've seen this from Dashik before. In his previous games, he's not the best at uh, noticing when these Marines are moving out. And loses another two Lings. Which is frustrating, to say the least. You really want to keep this Ling count high, especially going for uh, Ling speed. Uh, just as a deterrent for the Marines moving across the map. If naked Marines can just walk across the map and force Sunkins at this point in the game, you might as well just give up. You really need to keep the Terran player back in his base with the threat of the Lings or the potential of the run-by. So that you can get enough drones out to make this Spire play work. So, keeping those alive is of the utmost priority. It's going to be focusing on doing so, I hope, from now on. Metabolic boost about to finish, but here comes the Marines again. Is he going to lose two more links? Oh no, Dashik. This is not good Zerg play. We need to be saving these. Gonna start a sunken colony back at home. He's hoping that he can make, I think, just pure muta, but he starts two sets of lings. Go ahead and start that sunken colony. It's not gonna be done in time for when the Marines arrive, and he could actually lose a lot. Oh, wow. Sharp turns around at the last second. That is surprising. I was not expecting him to turn around there. You could see that there was not enough time uh, or there was, yeah, there was not enough time for that to finish building. That sunken colony was going to be killed or just run by. Uh, if Sharp runs past that sunken colony into the main, you just die. So Sharp missing an opportunity there. It's fine, though. He's still in a good position. Dashik gets a little bit lucky, and he's going to survive for now. Mutas are finally out. And how are we doing on turrets? Turrets are already done. I think he's going to run by, see what they can find. Doesn't really get much for his scout. And one Marine heading over towards the top right. That's going to be spotted. See if Dashik responds to that. Just one M Muta going to be broken off to kill that. Not a bad response. You would have rather just send two Lings to go kill that, but hey. He threw those away to get some scouting information, so he has to work with what he's got. Um... Pulling a Muta away. Okay, no, he's not even going to pull the Muta away. So he lets the uh, Muta, or the Marine make it his way up there. He's just going to build one set of Lings at that base before switching into drones. So that's a reasonable response as well. Pulling a Mutalisk away is not a very a good thing for a play that's so dependent on Mutalisks in the early game. Going to fly in now. Going to find the same sort of position where he was... Able to deal a lot of damage versus light. All right. Picking off an SCV or two. Only has one sunken colony back at home, though. And the mutas are still quite far out. Ooh, this could be dangerous. One more mutalist going to spawn. A few more making their way forward. Ah, free muta. It's always nice. For the Terran player. So he might be able to finish this. No, nope, running forward. He's just going to go for it. What are the medics doing? The medics just kind of backed out at the last second. He loses two Marines. He shouldn't really have lost any. And now Dash is going to dive on this. I feel a mistake from Sharp. Look at that. He still has nine Mutas remaining after cleaning up that army. Not bad at all. It's funny, but it seems like a lot of these 
very good professional players are making some interesting kind of silly mistakes versus Dashik. And he's doing a great job to capitalize it. I'm not saying that mistakes like this never happen with pro players, but generally you don't expect Sharp, of all people, to, for, uh, to, to forget to pull his medics into the fight when going for a sunken bust. But there you have it. Makes a bit of a mistake. Dashik capitalizes, which is exactly what you need to do. As a strong player, you just need to capitalize on the mistakes of your opponent. Everybody makes mistakes in this game. Some fewer than others. Be the first to admit that I make a lot of mistakes, but... Everybody will make mistakes at some point. You just got to be on the watch for them. Try to make do with what you can get. So, Hydralis Dan, we're switching into Hive as well. It's a great timed uh, tech switch. Very well timed. It's going to get scouted. But there's not really anything that uh, Sharp can do about this. He's building Valkyries, so he has to go for this play. He has to go across the map and try to do something with it. But there's going to be Lurkers out very, very soon. The Marines are starting to move. I don't see any Scourge just yet. So he's not prepared to punish these Valkyries. Might be able to dive on this one at the back, though. Just one Valkyrie is not a huge scary for these Meatless to deal with. They might be able to take that out. Quite a few Lings over here as well. Maybe with the Ling Muta combo can clear out this initial group. He's actually running back now, adding on more sunken colonies, getting his lurkers ready. So he doesn't need to commit to this, I suppose. Just building some sunkins, getting those lurkers online is probably going to be enough to hold off. And then the mutas will be more useful in defending drops a little bit later on. Probably this area is going to be prime target for dropships. They'll be coming through. So the Valkyries are going to be used to clear out overlords, especially at the edges of the base. And that's when the dropships become the most effective. So he's going to come in, start to hit these overlords, deal some damage through that supply block, and look for an opportunity to possibly drop into this base. I don't see any dropships being made just yet. Instead, he's going into science vessels while a sort of counter-attack is coming across the map. I'm not sure about this. With the bunker, he's probably not going to be able to make his way in there. Lurkers at both natural and main. I don't see a Nidus yet. There it is. Nidus on the way. I did see a, a Defiler Mound, but I don't see the upgrade just yet. We're also missing an Evolution Chamber, or an upgrade from the Evolution Chamber should be coming along soon. Ooh, this hidden lurker stack is juicy. Is he going to be able to catch these? That would be insane. Sharp might have seen that with a scan or something. He's acting a little suspicious. Getting into position to maybe capitalize on that lurker landmine. If he walks into it, it's probably not going to kill every marine. Oh, he catches a little marine group heading towards the natural. That's nice. That is very nice. Army going to be brought back to try and deal with that. Went after a vessel. He's going to dive. Not quite all the way, though. Backs out at the last moment, and the Valkyries are probably going to clear out the rest of this. So the Muta is going to retreat towards the main. We do have some Scourge. Nice scan there. Able to spot those Scourge, and we'll keep the Valkyries out of harm's way for now. There's a double drop. There it is. He's going to be going for it soon. What do we have in the main base for Dashik? Not a whole lot, honestly. A few Mutas, a few Scourge. He's going to get his uh, next macro hatchery. And down some Irradiates, but the stack is pretty strong. Won't be able to break through that easily. Here comes that drop. Drop is coming into the main base. Oh, any reaction from Dashik? No, not yet. And there are uh, these Valkyries ready to dive on this as well. Some Lurkers are going to be brought forward, but he really needs to save this Evolution Chamber. If that Evolution Chamber goes down, things are going to spiral out of control super, super fast. 
the Spire, the Queen's Nest. Uh, potentially the Defiler Mound could be under threat as well. Lurker's gonna run underneath the Dark Swarm. He does manage to kill that Evolution Chamber. Very nice snipe from Sharp. Doing an excellent job with this drop. Just landing barely out of range. He will be able to clean this up. Dashik going to finish off these last few units, but the damage is insane. That is so much damage. And another drop heading up into the top right. Will he spot this with the Scourge? No, because of course, Sharp scans ahead. He sees that coming. He's going to maneuver, find a location where Dashik just cannot see, landing those Marines in to this fourth base is going to be super, super annoying. He's probably going to lose this hatchery, maybe even this hatchery as well, most likely. going will be losing both of these hatches, and he doesn't get the recovered money back from that either. Finally, the Vol uh, Valkyries go down in the main. No lurkers, by the way, at this natural. Oh, the Scourge really need to move. Looks like he's trying to clear this out at the same time. A bunch of workers are going to go down to the eraser trick from uh from the sharp excuse me oh man that's so painful he lost a ton of workers there he's also having a hard time clearing up the main base while all of this is going on we've got titan reactor i haven't seen that for a while titan reactor on the way he's going to be getting 250 energy per science vessel At least boosting up that maximum energy so he doesn't have to worry about wasting it if he goes beyond 200 energy. It will still continue to bank up. We have a plus one upgrade now on the way once again, but this is way behind where it should be. There's a nice catch with a single pair of Scourge. Going to get one of those science vessels, but Lurkers coming forward will have to be able to clear out the rest of this. He may end up losing the hatchery. But I doubt he'll lose any more tech to this. Because there are Lurkers and Dark Swarms available. Looks like he's going to pick this off. Oh, he just barely shoots down that Scourge. That's so annoying. Another load up. Another drop into this base. By the way, there's still units over in the top right-hand corner as well. We got a little counterattack with some links. Looks like that's going to be completely cleared up. Finally, some Ultras come out. But they are incredibly low on those upgrades. Look at how quickly they die. Even to just the small group of Marines. They're barely going to be able to stand their ground. Really sad to see the Ultras just barely able to deal any... <clears throat> barely able to withstand any damage. Excuse me. Finally, plus one's going to finish. But what do we have in the top left? Barely anything at all. Look at the Ultra just getting wrecked. But what is this? Five Marines? Five Marines, not enough, or one Ultra, not enough to deal with five Marines in the current state of this game. We'll have one Lurker uh, going to work on these Marines, but man, things are starting to fall apart dramatically. Still no Ultra speed either. Looks like uh, Kitan is plating finished, but I mean, he's he's holding off everything with one Lurker. <laughs> this is This is not a good look. This is not going to end up working. Counterattack. Desperate counterattack right now from Dashik. He's just going to go for the natural, potentially. Maybe he'll go for the center left. He didn't go for the bottom center, which is funny. Definitely could have gotten a kill on that. Uh, but he's going to go over and take out this mineral only, I guess, instead. Maybe go for the natural now that he has the Dark Swarm. Okay, he's not going to. He's going to back away. Some irradiates go down. Going to burn out those ultras. Dark Swarm going to help out a little bit, but meanwhile, another drop into the main base. Dashik is falling apart. This is what I expected out of speed, but it's very similar to the way that Sharp plays, and he is showing a masterclass in tearing a Zerg asunder, jumping on top of all of these evolution chambers. He doesn't even have plus two started yet, unfortunately. Just sticking with this plus one. He does start plus two now, finally. But he's having a really hard time cleaning up this main base. The Lings are just dying as they run forward. That plus two being invaluable in these fights. We've got another Ultra coming forward, but there's no Spire. Okay, there's the newly made Spire. Spire, excuse me. The newly made Spire is going to be able to hold on. 
Uh, keep him in the scourge, at least for now. Another eraser, potentially? Is he just gonna come in for the eraser? Yeah, there it is. Where are the scourge? Where are the scourge? We really need to save these drones. There we go. He's got it. He's just got to target down that one that's been uh, irradiated, and he will. Running straight up onto these sunken colonies, but without any medic support, you might want to rethink that. Sharp just going to throw his army in against this, but the uh, sunken colonies are doing great work. Okay, maybe he still breaks through. Yeah, with the upgrade advantage and just barely enough Marines to punch through this front entrance, he is going to break into Dashik's base. It was very, very close, but this is just about the end of the game. The reinfor reinforcement wave is going to arrive in just a moment. Another <laughs> Diophiler Mount. I didn't even see that go down, actually. The Defiler Mount in the main base did die. Oh, wow. The Ultra's Cavern died as well. So he can only make Lings at the moment. That is all he's able to make. GG is called. The Dashik taps out. Sharp takes that win. Very convincing win there from Sharp. The way that he's macroing behind all this is insane. 60 SCVs. He's just pumping off of all of these barracks like crazy. Getting into his upgrades. What were the upgrades at the end of the game? I guess I can't see. Oh, no, they can. 3-2. Yeah, he's, he's just hitting every single beat. Bashing down every single door. Multiple drops in each different location. Plus the eraser tricks. This guy is out of control, man. Sharp is on another level. Cannot wait to see him more in the future. Let's jump into our final game. It's Scan versus Dashik. Should be a close match. Another match on Pantheon with Dashik spawning here in the bottom right. Sh Scan going to be over in the top right. It's getting a little crazy. How can we have this many Pantheon matches? Is Almost every one of these on Pantheon. Definitely feels like it. And I guess I could even call this like a Pantheon spotlight rather than, you know, Dashik or anybody else. Kind of an interesting series this has been though. I'm liking the map for TVZ. It feels very fun. And my experience on the map has been, it's been pretty decent, honestly. It hasn't been amazing, but what I found is that you, you really do have to take a natural as your third base on this map uh, or one of these bases. I mean, even these bases are, are tough to hold because of the high ground and coming down. And it seems like the pro players kind of agree with me. They're all taking other naturals and just doing their best to hang on uh, to that natural while taking a, f a fourth base and getting into ultralist tech. Pretty much how I thought this match would go. Uh, from the outset, Pantheon's such a big map. It should favor more ultralisk play, less defiler uh, and hydra lurker play. So that's been kind of the way of things so far. Seems like another 12 hatch out of Dashik, and this time a 1 Rax fast expand from Scan. So, no real early pressure, although I felt like Dashik handled the early pressure with Scan pretty well. You know, he didn't lose any drones. He was very uh, cautious in the way he approached it. Ended up working out pretty well in his favor. Just this early lane control seems like just a just a tiny bit off from where someone like Soma or Soul Key or Action Hero uh, is kind of at, right? Like they they just don't lose those early lings. They keep them alive and they always get work done with them. Whereas someone like me, uh, they usually end up dying because you know if you're just sitting out in front of the natural, you have to keep your eyes on the minimap all the time. Otherwise, the Marines can just walk forward, right-click down a couple of lings, and you just lose them so quickly. And so, it seems like he's lacking slightly in that area, but in other areas, he seems to be quite good. For example, like his overall uh, game understanding, and uh, strategically, he seems quite strong. He seems to know 
pretty much what the Terran player wants to do and how to counter uh, most of the moves. He doesn't seem to have any big holes in this game. Like, he's not super bad against uh, Valkyries like some Zerg players are, that they just get kind of overwhelmed by them. He does a pretty good job of mitigating them uh, and dealing with the tank pushes. He's got some good control when it comes to Mutalisk. Uh, early game incursions. And he's been able to put out some pretty decent Lurker landmines as well. Really taking advantage of the weakness of going for Valkyrie. So I'm liking his play so far. We'll see how he does against Scan. I would say this is a, a very even matchup. Dashik and Scan kind of on the same like level playing field. Although Scan has gotten into the ASL um, a little bit more recently, I guess. Might be wrong about that, but I, I feel like he has. And yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for a really nice game here. This is uh, a couple of medics popping out. He sees it, but as you can see, not any idea about moving out right now for scan. He's just going to sit back, wait for his scanners. His commsats are going to be up in just a moment. You'll be able to see the eggs uh, and their progress. And he's going to get a bunch of turrets behind this. Oh, a run by. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why did he lift up that barracks? Oh, he wants to place it down with the rest of these. But this could actually hurt him very badly. This is a really well-timed move from Dashik. Dashik is going to kill one of these turrets. And that can be devastating. He's even going to come back in and try to hit this again. The turret is getting very low. The Mutas will be heading directly for this location. Nice job making a bunker at that front. But he has to defend this turret. He needs this turret up and running. Otherwise, Dashik will continue to abuse this position. He does manage to get that online. Uh, still a little bit of time for Dashik to be aggressive. As we still don't have plus one or range finished yet. And there's a position here that can be easily... Uh, abused by Dashik. Four SCVs have gone down. Maybe five total. There's probably six. Comes back in for another swipe. Finally does lose a Muta, so no longer can one-shot. We'll be backing up a little bit now. Adding on some more drones. Dashik going to get into his third gas shortly. This has been pretty good for him so far, though. We almost had Scan kind of fall apart when he was losing that turret. And when the Lings ran by, uh, that was a bit scary from him. Mita's going to come in and trade once more. But plus one and range are done. So these Mutas do need to find good angles rather than just diving into the front line of Marines. He needs to do uh, be a little bit more tactful with the way he goes in. Meanwhile, Scan moving out on the map. Sunken Colony being made in the natural. Uh, as the Marines move out, we'll have to spread these Mutals out to try and find that Marine group. Nicely done. Pulling away from the Marine group before uh, the Mutalists get caught. Now he's uh, a little bit in the dark. He's searching. Searching for these Marines. He's not exactly sure where they are. He just saw it, though. He just now saw it with the Overlord, which is a very big spot. Not taking the greatest engagements, though. Doing a bit of a tech switch now as he tries to run down this marine medic group out on the map. Trading pretty well, I'd say. Scan doing a good job of targeting. Going to target down a couple more marines. He actually gets three for that last little bit of bioforce. And so this next bioforce heading over towards the natural might be a little harder to contend with. How many mutas do we have total? Just eight and now seven. One sunken colony. Two more mutas are going to come out. Now total nine mutas. That should be enough. He should be able to hold this off. Will Scan send out more units though? Is he going to throw out another couple of marines somewhere on the map? Try to get down to this bottom left. So far, the vision of Dashik is pretty strong. He's getting into his lurker. And Hive is on the way. So Lurker Tech is about to finish. He's making some drones, getting them to work, getting that economy going. It can be very difficult to know when to drone at this point in the game, but 
I think he's walking that fine line, that tight rope very well so far. He just needs to get Hydras out. Didn't see any in the natural, and I'm a little bit worried for him. He does dive on top of these Marine and Medic on the high ground. Little Force moving around this left-hand side. Is he going to spot this? Looks like he might run into it now. Maybe the tail end of it. This makes its way down to the bottom. Okay, he does see it. If that group made its way down to the bottom left, he would have been in a lot of trouble. So he does manage to find that. He can probably overwhelm it, although he doesn't really need to at this point. Lurkers are going to be made soon. And as soon as there's enough lurkers at this third base, uh, he's going to start to bunker down and really pay attention to getting his upgrades and everything online. So upgrade is coming. Carapace plus one on the way. Defiler mound. All well timed for Dashik. Dashik is doing a great job so far. He's playing actually a lot better than any other game. I would say he's he's hitting all of his upgrades and he's been killing these marine medic forces of course scan not quite as good at dealing with marine medic as some of the other players but he's been doing a decent job as well let's take a look at his base he's got up to six barracks now with double ebay about to be rolling and science facility uh just finishing up this is looking to be a scary terran mid game he's gonna have a lot of units He's going to have a lot of pressure. Wait, where are the lurkers? Hold up. He didn't make a lurker in the natural? Oh, the third base, excuse me? What happened? Okay, so, no, he's got lurkers. Okay, he's got two lurkers underneath this uh, overlord. Oh, God. Go in, go in, go in, go in. Okay, he is going to dive in. One of those lurkers may die, but definitely he's not going to be able to break through. He gets the lurker. Okay, that was the only lurker left. So more are going to pop through. These medics are going to die. And Dashik will hold on. I don't know if I like that attack from Scan. That seemed a bit wasteful. Just throwing everything in at the last minute there. Four more Marines are going to try to run by. This is getting a little bit insane. We don't need to be throwing away units like this. Uh, we need to be building up to a very big force of Marine Medic. In order to break some position. And also to cover the, the natural. Like, he could be moving out with lurkers and placing them out on the map now. And things could get out of control. Burrow on the way. This is all looking very good from Dashik. The fact that he's getting Burrow this game and he wasn't able to get it in the last game versus Sharp. It just it shows you how much less pressure there is coming from our uh, Terran player in this game. Wow, catching this dropship coming in as well. Does manage to pick off one of those, although there's quite a few Marines left over at the end of the day. They're going to be able to kill uh, his drone. Weren't able to get the kill on that uh, hatchery, but did get the drone in the end. Forced to cancel. He's chasing after the dropship, but it does get sent all the way back home. And so there will be a bio force pushing everything back. Coming up towards this... High ground. He actually kills one of the lurkers. That's insane. All right. Now the mutas can actually clear everything, though. Definitely can easily fight this and clear this. Are there more drop ships coming out? Looks like just science facility or science vessels for now. Where is that drop? Oh, did he kill that? I don't think so, right? Drop was sent all the way back home. Okay, into the mineral line, in fact. Got double upgrades rolling now. Armor 1 is done. Armor 2 on the way. Hitting those upgrades very nicely, but... Scan is expanding like crazy. He's already on two bases. He's going to be adding more in very soon. He could go into battle cruisers as well. Uh, you can afford four... Four... Starports... On these four bases. Is not unreasonable. Mita's going to come up to the top left, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Scan did not send anything over to this area, which is crazy because he didn't have any forces in front of this natural. He could have ran out with Lings. He could have ran out with anything to go and deny the base in top left. And Scan is going to lose a ton of SCVs for this mistake. Three dropships. Going to be loading up. He's 
probably going to head into the main, but look at the defenses. I don't think you're going to be able to get in there. Scan, heading down towards that main base. Will he comsat this? He does. He sees the Scourge. I think he's going to come in here. This worked out very well for Sharp, but I'm worried for Scan in this game. He's going in. Ling's coming up towards top left. The Scourge are going to lock onto this. Oh, God. He wasn't even moving. If he just kept moving, he probably could have saved that. Ah, another one goes down. Brutal damage. Okay, he will clear out the Mutilus at least, but the Marines down in this bottom corner are going to get absolutely massacred. A bunch of Irradiates go down, but now he's going to start to lose Vessels. He's lost top left to a Ling counterattack. Bottom left is now going to start mining on four gas. Scan is falling apart, my guys. He's having a hard time. The man himself, Scan the man. What's the follow-up play? More dropships. He's just going to go all in with this. Try to send even more chaos onto the side of Dashik, but I think with that last cleanup, Dashik is fine. He's going to finish plus two. Chitinous plating will be done. What are drops going to do against Ultras sitting and waiting in uh, the main base and this bottom left? Like, you're not going to break Ultralis with just a few dropped out units. It's not going to happen. Burrow. Oh, that's so funny. Burrow up here in the top right. Bunch of links just hiding underground. Okay. They will be spotted. That's important. Drop over into the bottom left. That's going to get taken out. That's brutal. That was the last drop. That was really left from that earlier attack. We're going to have three more drops come out. Now he's switching into Battlecruiser. Um, is he going to forget about this drop? He better not. Ah, uh, he's going to forget about that. He didn't rally the, the Starport, unfortunately. And so he's thinking that he's only got these two dropships. I guess he doesn't have the, uh, the units to utilize those anyway. But you got to bring them along. More lings making their way up into the top left. Looks like we're going to have a drone. Uh, heading to center left as well. Ah, flying right into this. Oof, another big kill there. Bunch of marines are going to pop out. But with only one dropship worth of marines and a single fire bat. What is that going to do against ultras and lings? Now he's going to try his best. He has 2-2. Two, two. He's almost got plus 3 as well. Um, plus 2 is done, though, for Dashik. So he's going to be able to stand his ground pretty darn well. And now the Ultras are coming out in force. Look at that wave of Ultras hitting the field. Dashik was not forced to build... Uh, to overbuild Lurkers in this game. He did a very good job of holding on with, for the most part, the minimum number of... Uh, lurkers and defilers that he needed so he has a big wave of ultras hitting the field and this is just gonna be lights out for top left there's no way there's no way you save this this is so many ultras they're about to have speed pretty soon he's even getting a uh, hydralis speed which is kind of funny he built two spores in his natural as well dude this guy is out of control dashik is very good guys very very good so you may end up losing this ultra but just preventing the mining in top left is good enough and look like right as the battle cruisers are arriving there he is already with the spore colonies he just needs the plague Ugh, messed up the plague does need the plague though on those we want them to beat spore colonies three battle cruisers will just fight the spore colony and win which is uh not good you don't want that to happen um some scourge coming up He's got uh, Plague ready for this. Plague, Plague. There we go. Nice Plague. Marines end up cleaning out all of those Ultras over at top left. Another drop into the main. Okay, okay. Scan. Getting in there. He's going to stop the plus three. That's huge. I'm getting excited. Are we going to be able to bring this one back? Scan in a pretty tough situation. Will kill the Spire. Spire goes down. I don't think he can push in any further, but... That was a sick move. Uh, he's heading out on the map once again with these Marines. Trying to come in with the Battle Cruisers to deal some damage. I think he's going to lose at least one BC. 
Kind of unfortunate. Um, the Hydras are not targeting the right BC. Two of them have no HP. There we go. He does get rid of them. Gonna have to rebuild that Spire. Hasn't restarted plus three. Oh my god. Dashik, are you gonna forget plus three again? Is that for real? After all the great gameplay we've seen so far, if he forgets plus three armor, could be in for a rude awakening as these 3-3 three, three Marines take a big fight against his uh, next wave of uh, Ultralisks. He might be out of luck. Plus one ship weapon, so plus two ship weapons on the way. It's rarely ever see that. Bunch of SCVs are gonna have to evacuate the position, but look at this. Breaking into six o'clock. Oh my goodness, is he doing it? Scan doing a fantastic job. Almost breaking Dashik's fifth base. Looks like he might even get through this. The Ultras are not gonna be fighting as well as they should, especially with the... Uh, okay, that's gonna work well. Yeah. Lurker Spines do a fantastic job, even with plus zero. They're still gonna be able to get a lot of kills there. Ultralisks, for the most part, have been cleaned. Yeah, this is doing pretty good. Look at that, four kills, five kills. These battle cruisers are doing great. Causing a lot of chaos, despite there being three sunk uh, spore colonies at the beginning of that. He's able to do a lot with these battle cruisers. Absolute hero battle cruisers over in this position. You'll love to see it. Dark Swarm almost in the natural now. Almost in the third base, and we don't have any other mining, so that is a very big problem. Another Dark Storm. No fire bats in this army. Gonna have to pull the SCVs, maybe go somewhere else. Maybe go over to this base, potentially. He is gonna lift off his main uh, command center and make a run for it. This Marine's gonna back away. We'll be able to get a plague on this, I think. Plague gonna come down on the BCs here in a moment. Dashik breaking through, man. I think he might have this. He's got the fifth gas online. His fourth, or his his natural is no longer mining. Uh, depleted there. This is depleted. That's still got a little bit of mining. We can still pump out enough ultras, I think, to keep this pressure on and prevent Dashik from, or prevent Scan from really uh, stabilizing in this game. If he just finds this Defiler, actually, he might be okay for a little bit longer, but he's not going to find it. The Defiler is going to make its way over towards this third base. Where are the Irradiates? Okay, there's the Irradiate. He gets that down, I think. Okay, he does manage to get rid of the Defiler before it can make its way over onto the base. So these battle cruisers are going to be uh, highly effective at stopping this. They just need to move a little bit farther north. At the same time, Hydra's making their way up to the front. He's switching into full-on Hydra Defiler. He's actually making just a ton of Hydras and doing a great job with them. Marines are going to take this fight. They should be able to fight well, but... Oh my gosh. Oh no. Scan not paying attention. He's just going to let a huge Bioforce die uh, over at that bottom center. Really rough trade there for Scan. And yeah, if he had some medics with this force, he could have fought back those uh, Hydras. But now that the Defiler has energy, I don't think it's going to happen. Some fire bats coming up to the front. The Hydras pushing in though. And there's nothing in this natural. There's no mining going on right now for Scan aside from this little tiny bit that's going at the third base. The natural, he's gonna hop out of this bunker, probably stim and hop back in, I imagine. Yeah, he really needs to get back in that bunker, that's for sure. I just come up with the Dark Swarm. They're gonna be able to take out these two battle cruisers. Those battle cruisers not gonna be enough to change the course of this game. Wish he would have pulled some battle cruisers over a little bit. Maybe make some use out of them, stopping uh, some of those reinforcements from coming up. But there it is. GG is called. Dashik takes it home. Man, oh man, what a close game once again. S Scan was very, very close to breaking this base. I mean, he denied so much gas coming from this natural. Even killing that hatchery. Forced back Dashik in a lot of ways, but man, you really do need to get these defilers irradiated a little bit further back. 
make sure that you have something spotting on the map or continue to scan to make sure that they are not getting in range of your bases an incredible series i am really excited about dashik right now i feel like we haven't seen him in this form before i definitely cast one or two of his games in the past but not like this beating light taking down scan putting up really good games against both speed and sharp i mean i feel like this guy may be destined for good things no we'll keep an eye on him anyway it may be that he just got lucky or caught some of these players on a bad day i'm not sure but we'll keep an eye on him nonetheless guys thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed it everything's all right here by the way hope i didn't scare you guys earlier with uh uh, what I was talking about, going to the hospital and all that. I'm completely fine. Uh, just wanted to make sure that I got checked up and that everything was good. All the scans, all the uh, the health check went fine. So I'm going to be 100% okay. And continuing to make videos like this for you guys for the foreseeable future. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you there.